Yes, it's been a few weeks, and this is part three. So, part three of how to improve video. So, before I start though, I've been off for a few weeks because first I went away. Well, not went away. I went to go away here in the UK in a little treetop climbing course. Almost died. So that was fun, and then I caught a cold, which that was not fun. But then it gave me time to think about part three on how to improve your videos. And there's many different topics I went over and recorded, and I'll just have to go through and kind of, uh, kind of uh, sort them out and figure out what I want to make on the topic. But this one will be more in line with picking the right time to make a video versus trying to rush your videos. It's, and it'll be a combination of everything, language and just all piece it into separate subjects. There'll be timestamps in the descriptions of what I'm talking about. But where else do you let's start with the first one. Language skills when talking to the camera. Now a lot of people tend to try and impersonate themselves on a camera and with a different persona. Now you can do this, but when it's starting out, I feel like it's better to kind of be yourself on the camera. Maybe not too much, but be yourself that you would around maybe your friends and your family and people you talk to. And it Generally, will bode well for you and won't make you look like another, um... Hey, look at me, I'm a YouTuber! Give me subscribers and views! Um, person over here, which I do run into loads of people, and, um, loads of people, and it, it, it can get a bit, um, a bit rinse and repeat when you find the same people doing the same thing, and obviously for years, people on YouTube tell you, if you, say, if you do the same thing this person's doing, you'll be just as popular as them. Yeah, but come with the backslash of people going, oh, you're just a, what was it, a copy of this person. And, um, you know, it'll go that cycle forever and ever and ever. Speaking to the camera is, at first, a bit tricky. Now, I've taken my time to speak to the camera, and it's not as difficult as it used to be. Um, but at first, talking to the camera and trying to say what you're trying to say can be difficult. The best thing to do is just to record a first draft of yourself talking, and then watch it back and kind of go over what you were doing, and then record it a second time. It's called a take. Directors do these in movies. They do a, a first take, a second take, a third take. It depends on what they're feeling. Some directors out there do loads of takes, or some directors can do one take, and it could be perfect. Um, but there are different sh there are different movies as well that do that. You go into the extras of a movie on a Blu-ray, and you'll find like different takes of a of a film and different outcomes of it. Even with videos, I do it sometimes. I'll say something in a video, and maybe I'll cough or I'll mispronounce what I'm saying, and then I'll pause for a second and retrace my steps and actually go back and say what I said wrong properly. Or if I miss that, I will edit it in post. I try my best not to because then trying to edit something I've said wrong and in post can be difficult. But yeah, learning how to speak to a camera and um, because to say you're not good at talking to a camera, say you're just good at talking to your microphone about on camera. But if you want a camera in your video, so you want to do like more video -y stuff like this and you want to actually talk to the camera, trying to get maybe just staring at your camera like if you wanted to just um, pretending to look at it, or get your phone, record your audio on your phone, and then, or what was it, and then if you have a separate camera, and record it there, or vice versa, you know, there's many different ways you can do it, but that is one of the first ones I want to talk about. Number two, number two is an interesting one, don't record when you're ill, and I've done this in the past, it is horrible, I felt like I wanted to jump off a bridge several times. Why I did it, I don't know. I think I just didn't care. And that's the issue. Not caring when you should be looking after yourself is... It, it's... It's backwards sometimes. I said, alright, I'm not going to ignore doing this video. I'm going to actually do this video and not forget about it. So then part two just sits there and then four months later, hey, part three. Um, I waited a few days to pretty much a week or two to then come up with ideas for this video and project them in a way that was it that is good for you. So I had a sore throat, it was terrible like two days ago, I couldn't even talk, but now I feel a lot better today and that's where I can actually talk and use my headphones because I had a blistering headache as well. Painful. But yeah, trying to make videos when you're ill, some people do it out there, some people are okay to do it, but if, if you physically can't, it's, it's, it gets to the point where 
the person watching you is gonna be like, oh, why would I want to watch a sick guy make videos? I'm gonna watch. I'm gonna go watch someone else. It will. It will drive people away, and um, so then people will be like, what did I do wrong? Well, they try to watch you do a tutorial on how to fix something, and you're going, hey you, every ten or every five seconds, and it's 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 annoying sometimes, and it can. No offense to the person, it's just I don't want to see someone sneezing twenty four seven, and uh, so it can be a bit. It will be a distraction. So, this, the, yeah, so the, the two major things I think it's good. Um, what was it? Language, speaking to the camera, and knowing your well being because it can be, you know, substantial. If, like, for example, you're not going to go to, say you're an actor, you're not going to go to a movie set uh, with a cold and, and actually doing a part when you have to play some druggy like Charlie Sheen. Um, then it, was, it, it, it depends what you're doing. If you're trying to actually do... See, you're not going to go to an interview when you're ill for a job. Uh, it'll, it'll show that you're the person you're trying to interview... What was it? The, the position you try to apply for. See, I can't even remember. So it'll show the person that you're trying to apply for. This guy's health is not good. Maybe he's just a slob. I don't know. So, your health and talking to the camera, I think, is perfect. Because I try my best now not to record when I'm ill. Another good tip... Don't over record and don't over make videos. I do this and it's and it's it's stupid. Ask me is not wrong. It's kind of dumb. So here's an entire uh, collection of videos that I have here, which um if we look up here equal to six hundred and seventy four gigs. All right, fun. Um, let's go over to the main archive uh, file. Video creation. Gaming videos. This one's even worse. This one's worse. 776 gig. You're like, oh, it sounds about the same. Well, this folder here is 300 gigs alone. So you see what I mean? Recording too much and not knowing what to do with said videos is a bad idea. My best advice for that is to record what you want to record. Don't record stuff that you think you have to record because the YouTube algorithm system is telling you. Um, so, like, I have loads of videos in here, which I don't know what they're for anymore because I've recorded them without realizing. Subconsciously recording. Subconscious recording. Now, you can make videos ahead of time and schedule them. Just don't over-record. Because then you're going to need 8 terabytes of storage. Don't do it. And if you're thinking, well, how can I make videos and then upload them over the course of a few days? You could do that, so pre-record stuff. Uh, it's actually probably a better idea I should do that. Pre-record stuff and have something then to upload. But recording loads of videos and then forgetting about them is where uh, I go wrong. And then I have to have more storage to keep all these videos on. And then go, oh, I might do this video there and then, oh, I don't know, not sure, blah, blah, blah. It's a mess. It's it's horrible and it drives me up the wall. So, if you're expecting Path 3 to be a massive improvement, I'm sorry it's not because I've had, what was it? It's, I've, I've had time, life, real life is integrated into the YouTube space. So, Path 4 will be a bit more of a interesting video. Although, if you did like this video, uh, like it and subscribe because I'm here to help everyone try and make better videos, that be for YouTube, or that be for personal use, or anything like that. Um, little last bonus tip, I think, um, is great. Try your best to look interested in your videos. Don't make a video about something that you don't like. It's called, do not jump on the trend bandwagon. I don't do it. I mean, look at me. Look at the rest of my channel. I don't do it. Sometimes I will jump on the trend if I enjoy the trend. But if it's a trend I don't like, and it could get me loads of likes, subscribes, and views. But what if I don't like the trend? No. It's like the it's like the trend back in high school where if you liked Justin Bieber, oh, you were automatically gay for some reason. And if you enjoyed Justin Bieber's music, no one would like you. So... It was a safe bet to not like Justin Bieber, which is weird because what if you did? I is that that drove me nuts. I used to ignore that I didn't like. Oh no, I definitely don't like Justin Bieber. He's terrible. I mean, now I don't care because I mean you can call me gay or what. Don't bother me. So eh, whatever. But um, yeah. 
thank you for watching this video. A little small, quicker video. I think my last two videos have been like 30 minutes, so yeah, that's been a bit long, so this is a quicker video. Um, a lot of these videos will be more informational stuff, tips and tricks, and um, a lot of these videos will come out over the course of the next few weeks. Um, also, another great tip, make sure you have a drink next to you when you're talking for long periods of time. Your throat will dry up, and then that's where you start to mispronounce stuff. Um, so, um, yeah, anyway, hope, what was it, thank you guys for watching, make sure to check out the other two videos, and if you have already checked out those other two videos, maybe check out some of my favorite videos, um, there are a few, they're a bit old, but they're still some of my favorite videos, uh, you should check out, um, wondering where I got this chair from, check out the review of that. I've had this chair now for maybe about a year, or I think two years now, I can't really remember. For a hundred quid, this chair is amazing, and yes, there's a gaming chair, but it works. Tell you that. Another great video is check out my review on my Corsair headphones. Again, these things are amazing. Um, next, in the next video, I might talk about hardware, but in more of a scale of editing of videos, and what PC specs you do, and the, the do's and don'ts, um, so yeah, stay tuned for that, if not, uh, maybe I'll talk about that in its own little video, anything editing related, um, I will do in its own segment, because I recorded 40 minutes of me editing something, and I got bored, see, there we go, I don't generally like doing editing tutorials, because I myself am a bad explainer when it comes to tutorials, it drives me nuts, other people I recommend with editing tutorials, if you're using DaVinci Resolve, is Mr. Alex Tech. He does loads of tricks and tips. Um, another one is Casey Ferris. He does a lot of good tutorial stuff. It was actually Casey Ferris, the one I picked up when learning DaVinci Resolve back in 2017. Um, pretty great and amazing. And um, yeah, anyway, stay tuned.